Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 where I'm going to try out the Hughes H1 Racer from HCG Digital Arts Limited. Uh, this is available on Sim Market for 14.48 euros or about $15 at the moment. And I'm going to fly it at uh, John Wayne Airport in Santa Ana which is as close to uh, where Hughes would have actually flown it as we can get. The actual airfields are no longer operating unfortunately. Uh, now the Aerosoft H1 in FSX was probably my favorite plane in FSX, so Flight Sim 10. I really liked it, and mainly because it tried to kill me a lot. Uh, it is a very difficult plane to fly, uh, especially in real life. Hughes himself crashed it, but that was because he ran out of fuel. Uh, he also did fly it across the country in under 8 hours, which was very impressive, though he had some wind helping him out on that one. But it is a plane both with tremendous speed for its time as well as tremendous range. It has large wings and it managed this by being very optimized and sleek and all that business. And maybe you should watch The Aviator for more details. There's a famous movie about Howard Hughes that covers its development. But in FSX with the Aerosoft version, uh, it had engine heat simulation, it had the landing gear collapsing when you landed too hard, it had a lot of landing gear drag, and I'm not expecting quite as much here. I would love that, and hopefully they'll develop it further so that they could add that. Uh, but what they say is responsive and fun flight model. I will tell you that in flight, uh, FSX, it wasn't exactly a fun flight model. Responsive, sure. But uh, it was a dangerous flight model, and uh, so yeah, that's why I'm, I'm raising my eyebrows on that. And it's got uh, fuel pump, fuel transfer switches, uh, dust. It says engine heat, uh, but we'll see. Hydraulic landing gear, uh, gravity operated emergency gear, uh, removable canopy, and uh, lights, of course. New propeller simulation, computational fluid dynamics, and PBR textures and all that business. It's aerobatic smoke. There's 12 liveries, but um, I'm not really thrilled with the look of the liveries. I'll probably make my own, especially the HCG Race Squad lettering on the sides, on the really neon colored ones. It doesn't quite work right. <laughs> so, but I'm, I'm sort of a graphic artist, so uh, I'm picky about these things. So I'll stick to the classic livery. I think the text on the wing, the font, isn't exactly the way it was on the original. I think it was a different font, but it's probably all right. Now, it starts out with CG out of limit, but that's fine. Um, I'm going to try and max out the fuel to see how hard it is to take off with it. Well, it looks like we can go max fuel on it. That's interesting. Okay. All right. So we can do that and we will fly. Okay, so here we are, and yeah, the cockpit textures look much better than I expected. I, of course, remember the Airsoft H1 very well, and uh, these are better than what I remember from the Airsoft H1. And yeah, uh, nice looking seat textures, and back there, nice sound. Uh, I'm wearing headset, of course, uh, to get the full effect how those would be, but I think those are the smoke switches. Yeah, those are the aerobatic smoke switches. So there are some uh, add-ons here. And this is how it is on the outside. Again, the thumbnails didn't really capture it very well, but it is better textures, textured than they indicated. The cowl is sort of wiggling a lot though. <laughs> but we can see the rivets and the relevant details. Now, a big reason why it was sort of dangerous for me was you can see the landing gear. The landing gear creates a lot of drag because it sort of extends out like this and it's super difficult to land with. And you can see the kind of angle of attack it takes off with. Well, it basically lands with the same angle of attack. And yeah. <laughs> and in FSX, the landing gear tended to collapse if you landed too hard on it. I'm not expecting that here, but who knows? So, releasing the brakes and throttling up. Tail dragger stuff as usual. We'll have to compensate for its little drift. It sure doesn't need all of its power to take off. And we're off. And gear up. 
I can't really hear the gear inside here. Now I have uh, FS Realistic as an option, but I've turned it off. So we're trying to get the original audio here. So this is how we're looking. Well, let's get the sunlit side. It's a little bit better. It certainly is responsive. It's not as uh, sticky as some of the other planes in FSX, uh, in uh, Flight Sim. Um, and so the computational fluid dynamics might be working well for it. I don't know. We're going about 260 knots indicated. I have it on external display. And performance-wise, I expect that it's pretty much spot on. And looking at it, it seems that way. We'll really only get a sense of that at high altitude. So I'm going to max out the throttle. And what we see is it maxes out at about 34 on the manifold pressure. So if there's any sort of engine sim that does heat, the fact that I've got it maxed out right now might have an effect. Okay, the mixture control does seem to have an appropriate effect on the RPM. In FSX, the plane overheated quite readily. If you push it for too long. Here we can see the oil temp right there. I suppose that's in Fahrenheit. A little bit over 200. The view out of the canopy. Again, I'm uh, keeping it at full throttle. Manifold pressure has dropped as we gone. we've gone up. We're at 8,000 feet now. If my external indications are correct, I think the fuel flow is a little bit low. It's using less fuel than I would expect it to. Right now my reading is we have 266 gallons and it's consuming 12 gallons per hour, so that's a little bit too much duration. Our ground speed right now is 275 knots. So maybe if we kept it running at full tilt for longer than I've planned, it might have a problem. But right now it's not having any problems. I think the oil temperature is basically stable. I'm at full throttle and I don't sense that it has the same sort of overheating that I saw in the Aerosoft one in FSX. I'm gonna try to land back at John Wayne Airport. So here we are passing through the clouds. Descending from roughly 10,000 feet. But yeah, it certainly looks better than I expected. And it performs fine. It feels fine to fly. No special problems there. They are certainly correct that it is fun to fly. It's just that I'm a little bit strange in this department where I I look for things that are dangerous to fly <laughs> basically I'm not a general aviation airline pilot much uh, I, I like planes that are challenging so and that's why I like this in FSX because it was challenging In fact, that, that little image there, sort of flapping around, is interesting. Well, I can't quite explain how horrible it was trying to land this in FSX, but my, my success rate on that was fairly low. We'll see how it goes here. 
The landing gear has some drag, but uh, nowhere near what it did. It was a precipitous drop in FSX when I lowered the landing gear. I think the Hughes H1 is one of those tail draggers that actually lands on all three, including the tail gear. And that's because of how weak the main landing gear is. And also the angle of attack it tended to need on touchdown. But we'll see what it does here. I've deliberately gone a little bit high. Oh, oh, okay, it's stalling. Uh, okay, uh, ooh, okay, that was rough. That would definitely have killed me. Yeah, we, we we basically stalled right there. I thought it was 80 knots that we were supposed to land at, but I might have been wrong. Oh gosh. Okay, I died. Hmm. Well, uh, that was basically down to me not having the right stall speed there, and that's probably because I still was fully loaded with fuel. Uh, I might have been thinking about the stall speed with it empty. I actually, in uh, in FSX, I don't think uh, I would have even attempted to land it with this much fuel inside. Uh, we've already established that we can take off with it fully loaded. I think uh, I think maybe I should try to underfuel it so that I can do a landing. It's uh, what it felt like was that you could do a landing with it even fully fueled, but yeah, it's a big difference obviously between, let's see, 5,345 pounds and let's say 3,951 pounds. Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick takeoff and landing with it lighter and see how that goes. It's fairly easy to take off with this compared to some other trip tail draggers. Unless you're actually planning to fly across the country, you really don't need this full of fuel. Okay, lining up again. Okay, let's see. trying to find the spot. I mean, it might be that the previous landing speed is correct now when we have very little... Well, we have contact. The green on the landing gear lights sort of flash when we get contact. Alright. Well, we're all over the place. Uh, <laughs> oh no, I applied the brakes too hard. All right, all right. Well, it's gonna be a little bit tricky to land. It's not gonna be easy, but it's certainly not as bad as in FSX. Then again, I might be the only one in the world who wants it as bad as the FSX one. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a decent challenge to uh, land this, I think. But, yep, so that was the Hughes H1 from HCG, and I think it is certainly a fun plane to fly around and I plan fully to try and cross the country with it and we will see whether replicating that particular flight uh, we get the fuel flow that we're supposed to have or whether I could fly too far. Basically I'm gonna test that flight to see whether we get the correct amount of range or whether it's maybe overdoing it. Uh, 3476 nautical miles is a lot. But uh, right now, looking at the fuel flow indication on my external app, it seems like it doesn't, it's got more endurance than it ought to have. So I'll have that some other time. But for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.